what is going on youtube what is going on how are you guys as you can see i am back a very long day lots to talk about so i guess i'm just gonna talk about what i went through today while i opened some of these packages that came in so let's get set up over here So uh, here we are in my kitchen. First things first, I rounded today and I went to the clinic. Very interesting cases that I saw today. So starting with the clinics, well actually, oh uh, yeah. So I'll start with that. So the way it works with the person that I'm under my preceptor for internal medicine, he prefers to do the clinic stuff and then we round later on. Because rounding can be done all day long. So. He already has some form of rounding that goes on in the morning, but he doesn't require me to come in for that. He requires me to come in for the clinic and then there's rounding for like two hours, three hours, whatever, after the clinic. So for the clinic, you know, it's pretty much uh, straightforward today, you know, seeing patients, working them up, obviously working on your patient clinician interaction skills, which was nice to do. And then also too, I had six presentations. And I thought to myself, I'm like, look, I need to take on this challenge. I know I'm going to regret it, but I need to show him that I am that that guy. You know, like I am a good student. I'm here to work. I'm trying to be the best possible doctor I can possibly be. And this guy is the guy that will be able to do that for me because he is so strict, but you learn. So I told him, I sent him a, a text message. I said, sir, um, if you don't mind, can you send me all the assignments you would like me to do? And I knew, I knew it was gonna be something because I didn't hear anything back from him. He actually didn't respond back for a whole, I think three hours. Then randomly in the afternoon, he hits me up and he sends me six different things that I needed to present on for the following week, which is this week. I spent uh, that time during the week, obviously studying for step two, you know, reading, doing, you know, the normal stuff, studying for school, all that other stuff. And then at the same time, I also had to study for this. And there were six of them, six assignments that I had to study for so that I could present on it. But luckily for me, I just broke it up. So I would do two a day. And then I had two extra days where I wasn't going to have any assignments. So if you do two a day, you get it done in three days. And then the last two days or review days to go over the material. And then on top of that, I woke up early in that way. And when I came in, I was good to go. That was when I first came back, okay? That was on Tuesday, which was yesterday. So Tuesday was good. Tuesday was just all clinic. So fast forward to today because it's just some, some apple sign of apple cider vinegar pills times i stumble on my words but yeah i use this because this helps to improve your digestive function it will cleanse you out trust me so that's why i use these very important you know if you eat a lot of meat a lot of things that take time to process and get out your gi tract make sure you're taking this okay uh going back to what i was saying so I did two or three presentations yesterday. And so I knew there were three more left for today. And knowing him, I, I knew I was, oh, it was kind of, it was messed up. Sorry about that. So I had three presentations left to do for today. So you know what I made sure I did is when I came in, I came in 30 minutes early. I was already in his office. He didn't show up until I was in his office for a minute. So 30 to 40 minutes. And then when he came in, immediately he sat down. And, How are you doing, sir? Blah, blah, blah. Got right to it. I told him, like, hey, we still have three more left to do. I said, like, oh yeah, that's right. So what were the three? And then I told him what the three were. And then we just went through it. Like I stood up, did my thing, presented to him. Um, and the way he likes presentations, right, is you start from the very beginning, the etiology, the pathophysiology. Sometimes there's a lot of physiology that goes into whatever it is that you have to present on, the differentials for it, medications, treatment, all that stuff. Like you have to know all of that stuff when it comes to him and he will grill you. 
you start going through something and then he'll stop you and be like, okay, why are you using this test instead of that test? So that's kind of what happened today because I'll give you an example. One of them was the well score, right? So you use the well score in order to understand it's a pretest probability for pulmonary embolism. So using the well score, you're able to understand does, is it likely that this patient has a pulmonary embolism? And based off of that, you understand which test you're going to order, right? So say for instance that they are PE likely, there's two tests that you can use, you know, in order to help diagnose and confirm what you're thinking. And one of them is gonna be a CT pulmonary angiography, and then the other one is like a VQ perfusion scan. Where I messed up was, and I won't make this mistake again, is I didn't research why would you use one over the other. The reason being is if you have, there are some contraindications. So if you have a patient that has um, acute kidney injury or chronic renal failure or something like that, obviously you can't use the CT because it uses contrast. So that's when you would go for something like the VQ perfusion scan. Even though I kind of knew that, already because I've presented on acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease and all that other stuff. I, it just didn't click for me. So he grilled me on that. He was like, why would you use this one over the other one? And then I was like, dang, oh man, here we go. <laughs> but luckily, you know, he helped me to reach, to get to the point of understanding. And I'm like, oh yeah, of course, of course. So that's just an example. So I had six, so I did three today. We went and we rounded. You know, my rotations is a bit different with this guy because it's with him, it's, I would say for the most part, it's, he teaches a lot. So when you're going through rounds, any little thing that you're going to see, any case, any, if a patient has this or that, he is going to grill you on it. The residents there, they're seeing you getting grilled. Um, nurses too as well. So I've had that a couple of times. And then I get to see how, what, like the interaction between, you know, doctors, residents, and nurses, and how things work. Even the technicians when they're using the dialysis machines, because, you know, for this rotation, this guy's a nephrologist. So there's a lot of calculation. There's a lot of lab values that you need to know when it comes to nephrology. And he was teaching me this, show me the dialysis machine, you know, the different things you have to calculate what you're using is being filtered this way, potassium coming up this way, different things like that. So for this rotation, in my opinion, it's very cerebral. Like you do a lot of thinking because when it comes to the kidneys, there are so many things that play into renal function when it comes to the electrolytes and everything, right? You have the parathyroid gland, you have the bones, you even have the liver, you have the heart. A lot of those things, if one of those fail, the kidneys will get shot and you would see something. When it comes to this rotation, at times I find myself where I know the information, but it's a big picture and trying to recall it like that especially if you're just walking through the hospital walking fast you're seeing patients and out of nowhere you're in a patient room and then their doctor's in there and he's in there and immediately he's like okay why what why, why would you do this why would you give this medication and then you have to like boom 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 think very quickly like pick your mind very quickly so i'm trying to shift from that step one relaxed kick back in my chair clicking on my mouse Oh, option A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then I have a clinical vignette. Look at the last, I'm trying to get out of that whole mindset and more into finding out how to get to the diagnosis or at least having differentials, right? And in one of the other videos, I showed you guys that I picked up a differential book that literally saved my life. Saved my life, I'm telling you, because now, especially with rotations, or at least I'm only gonna speak for internal medicine, it's my first rotation. It comes down to knowing the differentials. You may not know the diagnosis, right? But at least have a good set of differentials to help guide you in a certain direction because there are lab values, there are certain things that the, the patient's going to present with, it's gonna to help to knock out some of the differentials. But if you don't know how to get to that point of at least listing out differentials, you're gonna find yourself stumped a lot of times, at least for a rotation like this. If you end up having a preceptor like mine, 
where you're going to walk into a room and the patient's in the bed and the patient may just have something simple as abdominal pain and then the preceptor is just going to grill you okay what are the differentials for this this patient is uh presenting with vomiting and, and abdominal pain and this this and that but you get what i mean by that right know your differentials okay you don't have to absolutely know every diagnosis that this is medicine there's so much out there to know you're not going to know everything but be able to narrow it down be able to have a systematic way of approaching a case and if you're at least able to do that that's the problem with me i have a problem with multitasking I have a problem with multitasking. As you can see, I've been picking at this while I'm talking to you. But yeah, if you can at least narrow down or at least have a systematic way of how you present and you have your differentials, your preceptor will respect that. You don't need to know everything. I don't know everything. I'm an average student, okay? I'm not like some super smart guy. But one thing about me, I work very hard and I pay attention and I ask questions. If you don't know anything, just ask. Okay, it's better than sitting there and, oh, 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 you know, just be like, hey, look, I really don't know the answer to that question, but I'm more than willing to find out, if you don't mind, if you can explain to me what that means. I'm like, okay, well, hey, this is what this means. And then go from there, right? So that's how today went. Went to the clinic. Oh, I didn't even show you guys. Vitamin C. Don't, don't tell my preceptor that. He's a nephrologist, doesn't like giving vitamin C to his chronic kidney patients for obvious reasons but um yeah if you're if you're fine obviously if you don't have chronic kidney disease you can take vitamin C but not advised for chronic kidney disease patients that's how it went and then immediately from there you know the other thing too I was going to film going to the gym but when I tell you that doing this this whole camera thing throws my whole day off i completely forgot oh i swear this is like a hack for people who like to vlog this tiny little thing boom look at this when i'm driving it's just this i don't have my phone up there or this camera this camera's too big it's this little tiny thing here and i was going to take it with me to the gym but i forgot and my phone was like on seven percent so it is what it is I'll do a separate video, another day in the life, but I'll include the gym. I'll do that too, because I do work out a lot. Highly active. So that's how my day went. Obviously, I know you guys are not here to see me open boxes and stuff. Um, so it was just, um, you know, multivitamin and things like that. And then what I'm doing is I got this little file. It's like a file I'm putting next to my print over here. So I can start filing all the presentations all the things that i research and print out because so far this is this how i have them here so every presentation that i do remember i told you guys in the morning i print it out i highlight it and then i do it in a space repetition way you know every day in the morning skim through trying to keep this information in my head because even though my rotation is primarily nephrology it's still internal medicine and a lot of the stuff that i present on is not just nephrology cases or not just cases but like topics it's everything internal medicine so the more that i do that that saves me for later i don't have to worry about this later when i get into my dedicated or at least when i get into my dedicated i'm gonna know this it's only week four i'm with this guy until november what are we in we're in September, right? August, September. I think we're in September. Yeah, we're in September. I still have till November and look how much I've already presented on. This this is going to be so much. So I figured if I do it this way, I will cover a good amount of cases because you got to think too, a lot of the stuff that he's having me research and present on are stuff that is very prevalent in internal medicine. Almost you can call it high yield topics. Why else? I don't think he would randomly ask me to research something that is not prevalent, not something that he would be seeing consistently. So my whole thought process is by the end of the rotation, I want to at least have mastered all of these topics that he has me present on. And then that at, at least at that point, it's less work for step two CK. You guys get what I'm going with that? So yeah, 
I don't even know if a majority of you are like medical students, even if you're not. Use this method in a way, if you are a student or just in life in general, if you wanna get ahead, if you wanna be the best possible version of yourself, analyze the situation. What do you need to do? How can I keep this in my head? Okay, if you see that you have a tendency to forget things, then you need to make sure that you're consistently looking at it, understanding it. If you know I'm going into work tomorrow, I need to do said thing. Make sure that that said thing, you know, like the back of your hand. So what I usually do for said thing is I research on said thing. I know said thing. Then in the morning, I act like I'm going to do said thing. I create an environment and I do that said thing so that when I go into work and I have to do said thing, it's like another day, another Tuesday, a walk in the park. That is the only reason why I believe for the most part, I'm a pretty good student and I don't consider myself smart at all by any means. It's really just, I know how to analyze the situation, understand I don't know anything about this, but I will know it. And not only will I know it, I'll know it like the back of my hand and I will go further than just that. I'll keep trying to get better. That's the whole point. Always work on getting better. Don't become complacent. Even if you reach a point in which you obtain success, always look for more reasons to work harder. Okay, the harder you work, the easier your future is going to be. When you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you will not have to work, have to work nearly as hard had you not been doing what I'm saying right now. So sacrifice right now, even if it means you can't hang out with all your friends, be more than willing to do that. You have to be prospective in how you're thinking. Understand that, hey, look, I'm wasting a lot of my time right now. It's going to bite me in the ass later. Maybe I should lock in, sacrifice a year, two years, five years, so that I can set myself up for the future and I'm not stressing over anything. That's how I look at it. That's the reason why I work very hard. That's why you see me waking up early in the morning, 4 a.m., running, lifting, doing all this, studying. It's for some people, they think it's overkill, but for me, I'm just, I just want to be the best possible doctor I can be. I've been given an opportunity to do something that most people will never get the chance to do. And so in my head, I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm doing it for every person that's watching this. All the people that look like me or all the people that look that look up to me, I'm doing it for them. It's not even just for me. I've reached a point where now I have people that look up to me. I have to set the example. I can't just be out here kicking my feet back. What do, what do I look like doing that? Especially if you're someone in which you look around and you hardly see anybody that looks like you. There's even more pressure on you because the people in that environment, they're now looking at you and they're expecting you to act a certain way. They're expecting you to fit into a certain stereotype and you have to break that. You are the person that's going to change that. So if you reach a point where it's like that for you and you see that, you have to lead now. It is on you because if you don't, you are literally setting a standard for the people that are there and how they perceive people like you when they get to that level. You are paving the way and that's how I see it. Enough of the rants. That's it for me for now. So yeah, it's good that I did this because now I have an abundance of energy. I can go study, do what I need to do for the rest of the day. But I will catch you guys in the next video. I am trying to be more consistent. I swear. I swear I'm trying to be more consistent. It's just very difficult with my schedule, hospital, clinic, step two. I mean, projects, you know, presenting and everything, and then just life in general, making time for myself. I do want to do this and I do love doing this because I just know, I know it's going to be something later on in the future and that's why I'm doing it. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a great, ugh. let's try that again. I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.